Hi, I'm Christian Potenza, the voice of Chris McClain from Total Drama, the host with the most. The voice of Jude Lazowski from 16. Dude. And the voice of Trevor Troublemeyer from Sidekick. And a whole bunch of other ones. Hey, there's a bottom of the cup contest on the bottom of my cup. Awesome. What does it say? Whoa, the winner gets a pair of jet skis and many more amazing prizes. Please try again. Don't mind if I do. Yo, we're coming at you live from Camp Wawanaqua, somewhere in Muskoka, Ontario. I'm your host, Chris McLean, dropping season one of the hottest new reality show on television right now on Total Drama World Tour. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my episode of Voice Podcast. Today, I'm joined by a very talented voice actor. You may have seen him in shows like 16, where he played Jude, and the Total Drama series, where he played Chris McLean. My paisan and my childhood hero, Mr. Christian Potenza. Welcome, Christian. What's up, Joey? Dude, this is a great way to spend my Saturday morning. Because when I was a kid, you know what Saturday mornings were? Cartoons. Whoa. They were <laughs> cartoons all Saturday morning. I'm talking like a big bowl of cereal all day long. And these cartoons went to lunch. And wow. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so we're talking cartoons, we're talking voice acting, and uh, we don't have Saturday morning cartoons right now because you can just binge watch anything you want whenever you want. Uh, it wasn't like something you really look forward to. It's not that magic hour, but cartoons are still magic. And, uh, you know, being able to talk about them on a Saturday morning, well, it's making me a little nostalgic, Joe. So let's do this. Thanks for calling me, man. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what have you been up to? How are you doing? <laughs> Christian, that's the first one. <laughs> well, there's this little thing called a pandemic happening. Hmm. And uh, just trying to navigate through that, you know. But it's kind of funny because um, because of this pandemic, um, mm. my life has become very different. Mm. I was able to hone in on my craft and have my retirement dream come early because you see i am in hamilton ontario right now um where i have a studio called the infinity forge where i run and operate uh it with my business partner and best friend stephanie yelovich who is an opera singer and a voice actor and an actor too and we teach all things voice and acting and we were a venue before the, uh, and a training center and a, a digital creative media art center for everybody. You know, that's what we were. We were a creative media art center for everybody. And, uh, and uh, we were here and we were a venue, like a classroom and people would come in and they'd learn to make their demos. They would learn to do some on camera. Uh, Stephanie is an opera singer and a singing uh, and a singer. And so she would be teaching some singing. And she's also a Reiki practitioner. She works with energy. And because she's an opera singer, she was able to tone with that. So we do a lot of stuff with vibrations and really cool stuff here. We also run a program called the Freedom Forgers, which is for people that are on the spectrum or have disabilities or Asperger's or uh, developmental um, conditions. And, uh, so we were, we were trucking along, we were doing our thing, and then all of a sudden, we get a call saying, if you are a voice actor, you must record from home now. And I was like, my apartment's like over there, and it's not really neat and tidy, and all my equipment is here at the studio. So I decided uh, with Stephanie that we would turn our venue Mm -hmm. into a recording studio because I was I was doing cartoons like Total Drama Rama, uh, Bot Bots, which is a new one coming out for Hasbro. It's the new Transformers where I Ooh. play Bog Stopper on that. Guess what? Nobody knows that. I just gave you a leak, man. I just hey. gave you a leak. I got a new cartoon coming up that I'm on. Uh. And um, so now I got to record at my home, at, at my studio mm -hmm. because... 
all the people that we were teaching, we were teaching them to record at home. Because we as professional voice actors, we show up and show off in all the studios. But when the studios were shut down, we couldn't. So uh, Fresh TV gave me a Neumann TLM 103, which is the microphone that we record all the cartoons on. It's like a $1,300 or $1,500 mic. And I was like, all right. So now I have it here. And then we just kept getting more equipment, more equipment, more equipment. Next thing I know... I've got this like 48 channel analog board. We've got microphones. Stephanie went and got a Neumann TLM 102, which is great for singing. And, uh, and then we got more microphones. Aston, great company. So we started building. Next thing you know, we got a studio. And next thing we know, I'm living my retirement dream because I'm doing Disney cartoons and total drama and, and, and Hasbro shows right from my own studio. And I was like, Wow. I didn't think I'd be doing this until I was older when, when there was just a lot of gray, you know what I mean? But so when you ask me what I'm doing, it's like, I didn't know I'd be doing it, but I'm running a studio and I'm teaching a lot because Stephanie and I were also teaching at uh, colleges. We were teaching voice acting and we were the only program that could continue uh, teaching from our place because we put it in front of a green screen and we also taught people how to record from home and, and things were linked. So, you know, it was like my life became very different. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am currently, uh, you know, we went back to total drama. We're doing the uh, two new seasons. We already started it. Oh. And yeah, Dude, it's crazy good. I can't say nothing more, but total drama for life. Um, and so that's what I'm doing now. I run and operate and train and uh, uh, record from my own studio now. Wow. And that, that's pretty cool. So that's what I've been up to. What have you been up to, Joe? Talk to me, J-Rock. I got you. Okay, so like the beginning of you know, this whole pandemic, I graduated virtually high school. Okay, congratulations yeah. graduating high school. Thank you, thank you. And then I figured I'd start doing these podcasts a couple months like after graduation to help spread positivity, you know, cheer people up. Now that is, that is, uh, that's a good reason to do something, to cheer people up. Not like, check out my podcast, man, that's me. That's great. That's great. And you've interviewed some very, very big people, haven't you? I've interviewed like maybe a good amount of people. I would say my favorite probably so far. Christian Potenza so far. That's what's up. I'm not even flexing right now, Joe. Mm, this is great. We just started too. <laughs> Who knows? I could railroad this whole thing. It could be a crappy podcast because I end up talking about inane babble. It's fine. You could talk. I don't mind. Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> like I'm almost at 100 episodes of the podcast. Wow, that's great. That's great, yeah. man. You know what? Listen to this. I've been wanting to do a podcast since like the early 2000s. Wow. Mm -hmm. I still have not done my podcast. I have all these great ideas. So mm -hmm. you are more accomplished in an area where I wanted to do something. So kudos for you to you, man, because you're an inspiration. You know, if you can do it, then I think I should be able to do it too. So thanks for your inspiration, man. I like this. This is great. And I like that podcast can now be like Zoom calls or, or you know, Skype calls. And yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. If you want to, too, if you ever want like guests on, like voice, other voice people, like I've had Sean Aston. Yep. Oh, I could push them your way <laughs> if you want it could help you i'll get you some peeps you give me some peeps maybe we'll Hi. do it like a co-host thing <laughs> yeah that'd be cool the two, two pies italian guys two italians talking that's what we're gonna hit two dudes talking that's the name of our podcast i like it <laughs> i like that <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so uh what made you want to become a voice actor would you say and who's your biggest inspiration for voice actor? <laughs> Well, funny thing is, I didn't know I wanted to be a voice actor. Okay. 
I didn't know that was a possibility. I didn't think so. Because back when I started acting, mm -hmm. okay. well, you see what happened was you just, back then there was voice actors. They were okay. over there. And uh, this is in the early 90s, right? Like I'm almost, I'm turning 49 in December. Oh. And I didn't start voice acting until I was like 30. Okay. 31, right? And uh, what happened was, and I just fell into it. I just kind of just fell into it because um, it was one of those things where um, it was very, you know, if you were a voice actor, the voice actors stayed over here. The theater actors stayed here. The uh, film actors stayed here. And in, which, within each ca of those categories and models were over there, you know, comedians were over here. And it was like a John Hughes film. It was all these little cliques and pockets. And you had your, your hit, your demographic. And I, as an actor, fell in um, what back then they would call character or non-traditional looking, which means I wasn't a good looking guy. I was more charactery. I did a lot of like, I was non-traditional. So I, I was like, I was a lot of wigs, prosthetics, accents, you know, just like shapeshifter guy. And comedy, too. You know, you're either a comedic actor or a dramatic actor. But I seem to go back and forth. But early on in my career, in my mid-20s, I was in a lot of commercials. And it was they're very comedic. And, and I invented this, this character for these commercials. And this character had a laugh that goes like this. <laughs> that laugh is in everything. The cartoons, the spots, the radio spots, the movies, and I created this character. And what had happened was, um, I get called in to do a cartoon mm. by, by Tom McGillis and Marilyn Ridley, who at the time were working for Nelvana on a show called Bob and Margaret. So they call me, or they call my agent, and they say, we'd like him to come in. What had happened was they had recorded an episode of total of, of total drama. This is this this I'm giving you the whole story of how like how involved I was with these people for early on and had no idea that we'd all be a part of each other's lives and change each other's lives forever. Oh. Um, so I get a call to go in to um, to the studio. Huh? And I'd never been in a recording studio before and I come in and they, it was for an episode of Bob and Margaret, mm. which was a show that was produced here in uh, on Global. Uh, that's a network here. And uh, it was about these two British people that had moved to Canada. And oh. Bob, he talked like this. I mean, Bob had an accent and he talked like this. And mm. uh, in one of the episodes, it was they had a nephew. His wife's nephew was on the show and he was like a hoser, like a Canadian, just like dude. But I guess like in voice world, they will, they will match, they will, if they don't like it, if they don't, if, or if it's not going well, like it, it's not necessarily done just because you record mm -hmm. a character doesn't mean that you're going to be that character because they will still mix and finger paint and change the sound or cut a scene like they would in film, but they can change a voice. Whereas opposed to on camera, you can't change a person's face halfway through, but with animation, they do it all the time. Um, and so they wanted me because I was on all these commercials. They wanted me because I had, I have my own way of talking. It's very distinct. People say I have a unique voice. I don't know what that means, but I guess I do. But because I, I, with that character I invented for those commercials where I put certain emphasis on certain syllables and I, I got that stupid laugh, he sounded very Canadian. Dude, you know, just like this. I don't know what you want to do. <laughs> they liked that sound. They were like, get the guy from the commercials to, to replace the voice. They do it all the time. Uh, you know, they'll see a comedian doing all these voices and they'll say, oh, get that comedian in this cartoon or get that celebrity or get that sound. And, you know, and they put it in stuff. So I show up to my very first animation gig mm -hmm. and I, there's a big TV, like a big TV. And back in the in the 90s, those mm -hmm. big TVs were not common. 
you know, so I was like, cool, this is legit. I'm in a studio and I got a microphone and I've got a music stand and I've got my script. And they're all like, okay, so let's take a look at the first scene. And I was like, great. Because they, first of all, they said, hey, thanks for doing this. And I said, hey, I've never done this before. And they were like, we can tell. And it was Marilyn Ridley, who was the voice director that changed my life, and Tom McGillis, who was working on this show, who would later become the founder with uh, Jennifer Perch uh, to open up Fresh TV. And I'll talk about that story with you. So mm -hmm. they're sitting there and they go, let's take a, a, a look at the first scene. So I watch the first scene and I see my guy come in and I could hear the other actor's voice on it. And I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, don't copy his voice, do it your way, but match it up. And then that's the first time I saw swipes. You know, it's like, boop, 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 boop. And then I'd have to time it, right? Mm. So then I don't know about like, cause usually with the music stands, you can put three sheets of script mm. and you can do a pass. I mm -hmm. didn't know that. I was like one and then I turn the page and then I do another one. They're like, no, we can hear the page because this expensive microphone that you can hear air pass over nose hair, you know, was so, I was like, I didn't know that. And then I was like, okay. And then I have sheets flying all over the place. I look like a mess. I Sorry. couldn't do it. And uh, so anyways, I get through it. I finally figure it out. And it's like doing ADR for film where you mm -hmm. got to match sound, you know? So I was... I was doing it and I got quite good at it. And then I left and I was like, thank you for that wonderful experience. And they were like, you're fun to work with. Like, you know, I know it was new for you, but like, you know, you should stick with it. And, um, and, and, and you're also really fun to work with. So thank you for, for, uh, you know, spending some time with us. And I was like, thank you. That was great. But then uh. I start getting auditions mm. and for, for I'm in. You know, like I'm in the voice world now, apparently. And, you know, it, it spreads, right? It's like new voice. And back then we didn't have demo tapes. We just did it. They would just bring us in for auditions and do it because we were still recording on. It wasn't digital. We were still recording on tape back then. Oh, you know, wow. even our, 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 vid our video tapes were on VHS and we were FedExing those to like L.A. and Chicago, New York. Um, so That's anyway. Right. Sorry. That's where you're from, Chicago? Yeah, got it. Yeah, kind of heard it in your accents a few times. <laughs> you got that accent. Um, yeah. So then check this out. I show up. I book a cartoon. I book my first cartoon after this. It's a mm -hmm. small little role. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get there. Okay. And they're like, and I'm like, there's just a microphone <laughs> in the booth. Mm -hmm. and there's no and, and there's a music stand for for the sheet music and i was like where's the tv and they're like for what and i go so i can watch the cartoon and they're all like are you serious and i was like yeah right like that's what we do like that's how we make cartoons and they're like no oh my god i told them about my i've never done it before but i did i just did one like a few months ago and they were like no, 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 man, you were doing pickups. We're gonna animate around you. And I was all like, oh, I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And I, I thought, dude, I got a lump in my throat. And I was like, my face turned red. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. and they're like, why don't you go outside and, and just like read it for a bit. And then you just come in here and act it out. And I was all like, okay. So then I went outside for like 15, 20 minutes. I go, oh. I can just do my thing and da 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 da. And I come in and I go like, am I just gonna do it like this? And they're like, well, you're gonna do it the way we tell you to do it, but yeah, let's see what you got. And then that's how I understood how cartoons were made. I thought they made the animation first and then we filled it in. So mm. there you go. And so that's how I got into being a voice actor. Now, mm. once I started to understand how it was made, then I started to um, pursue it. Then I started to go after it and create this sense of style and work ethic, right? And that's when I started. Uh, then, then I got an audition for a cartoon called 16, or no, Sidekick. Uh, and it said his name was Trevor Troublemeyer. And he is a precocious, bratty 12-year-old. So I talk like this. <laughs> right? Like a brat. 
and I got the job. And that was with Marilyn Ridley and Todd Kaufman. Todd mm. Kaufman was the creator, and he was also the director with Mark Thornton for um, Total Drama for the first year. So they they mm -hmm. picked me to play this lead, and I was like, great. A couple months later, I get an audition for a cartoon called 16 mm -hmm. that said he's a chilled out skater dude that's on his own Zen plane. So I talk like this <laughs> and I got the part. Mm -hmm. Then while I'm doing that and like 16 is starting to like build and build and build, but it's still it's like up, only up here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Then three years later with Fresh TV, I get, I get a, an audition for a, a, a thing called Total Drama. And I had to audition for, uh, oh man, it was like Cody, Jeff, uh, Harold. Uh, there was a few others. They gave me like three to five characters. Dude, I sucked. I, I blew it. I was no good. My confidence was shot because Tom was like, I just hear Jude. Like, I'm just always hearing Jude. I'm not hearing anything else. And I was like, but that's all I know. Like, that's all I know is that sound because of my influence, which I'm going to talk about. But then, but then when, when I was about to leave and just go, okay, sorry, man. I'm sorry. I wasted your time. When I was about to leave, mm -hmm. Tom McGillis goes, here, hold on a second. Can you read this? And he hands me a thing, and there's a little cutout of this guy right here, right? Uh, there's a little cutout of this guy, like a little illustration, not a cutout, sorry. Uh, but it looked like a little paper doll that was on this sheet. And it said, it said his name is Chris McLean, and he's the host of the show, and, um, and he is... Uh, like Jeff Probst from Survivor. And back then there was a show called Punked with Ashton Kutcher, Ash wow. Ashton Kutcher on TV. And they said, so Survivor and Punked were on. He goes, so it's a combination of, uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's a combination of um, Ashton Kutcher and Jeff Probst. So I <laughs> thought about it and I was like, and I talk like this. <laughs> it was the same voice that I've used for all these things that I was booking with, but just different mentality of, of character. Mm. And when you ask me about my influence, like that's how I got into voice acting. But mm. the reason I got in this way and I'm known for like sounding a certain way is because back in the early nineties on MTV, I was watching um, a cartoon called home movies. Home movies. Home movies. So there was a there was a cartoon called Doctor Katz, where uh, Doctor uh, Jonathan Katz, he's a voice actor, a comedian. He would bring on other comedians. Like back then in the '90s, it was Ray Romano, Janine Garofalo, um, uh, what's his name, Louis C.K., and a bunch of prominent like comedians from that time who would come on and do their bits because he was a, he was a psychotherapist or a psychologist and they would run their things but it was just them talking so it wasn't really like animation when i'm talking like this they just talked like themselves you could see early on like ray romano was just talking about his mother and doing a shtick thing and he was they animated it so that same company that same company did this other one mm -hmm. called home movies where it was the same actors but on Dr. Katz, there was a guy, his name is H. John Benjamin. You might know him. He's the voice of Archer, and he's the voice of Bob from Bob's Burgers. Oh. So he was on that show where he played the son. Mm -hmm. And then when, when home movies came on, he played a character called Coach McGurk. Mm. And I would love this guy's voice, but he used the same voice because the same voice for Coach McGurk is the same one for Bob's Burgers, is the same one for Archer. I didn't know about that till later, but I said to myself, just the way he talks, mm -hmm. I remember pointing, like watching Coach McGurk, and it was so funny, and I loved his voice. I go, that's, I want to do cartoons like that. And then I wanted to be the Canadian version of H. John Benjamin. So that was my influence. That, mm -hmm. and when I was a kid, Peter mm -hmm. Sellers, 
Okay. Alan Alda from MASH, Robin Williams from Mork and Mindy, and mm. a lot of clown from Dick Van Dyke from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Those were my influences growing up, right? And SCTV up here and stuff like that. But, but my whole voice was based around me trying to emulate being that H. John Benjamin, one voice to rule mm. them all. Wow. And that's my story. That was like, that was a whole podcast to itself, wasn't it? I just ran on and on and on. Wow. 25 years of doing this. It's all going to come out in your podcast. <laughs> because if I ever get, if I so happen to ever get, would you be able to join? Would you want him? If I ever get H. Sean Benjamin on? Would you want to come on? Oh, yes. If I already get him? I'll invite yes. you. I'll oh, invite you. Oh, my. You know what? I, I just got goosebumps. I got really emotional, Joe. That was... <laughs> you get him? I've been dying to meet him. He's he's like my hero. You know what yeah. I mean? If it wasn't for him, my I hero. Yeah. He's my guy. You know, I have millions of fans around the world. Uh -huh. But, you know, I'm a hero to some, but like if it wasn't for that guy, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And that would be great, dude. I would be eternally indebted to you, man. I got you. That's me. That's me. My quest to get H. John for you. Oh man, I'm so glad I met you. This is awesome. This is the best Saturday morning ever. You know what? Your uh -huh. podcast. You uh -huh. said you wanted to make make a podcast to make people feel better. Uh -huh. Tell you what, buddy. You just like, made this guy feel a hell of a lot better. So your podcast is awesome. Thank you. I got you. Like I, I love to help people out too. Like so, if you want me again for you, I'll try my best. Okay, I want again for you. That's my goal. Him. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Like, I would love the three of us to talk. That would be amazing. I got you. I got you. Got you. Wow. I'm going to cry. <laughs> These trade winds are making my eyes a little misty. Mm -hmm. All right. I actually had a, they say he's a Canadian legend, like he's a comedian on the podcast. This one guy. Do you know who, uh, are you familiar with Tommy Chung at all? Teaching Chung? Tommy guy? Chung. Yeah, I know his daughter, Precious. I'm friends with his daughter. I've been on Precious Chong's podcast a bunch of times. Wow. I've oh, actually I know had Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. I've had him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, dude. You're huh. a legend, Joe. You're a Thank legend. You. Hey, when I get my podcast up and running, you're going to be the first guy I interview. How about that? That sounds good. Thank you, Christian. I got you now. Look at this. Thank okay. Now, this might be tough. Your favorite voice acting role. And if you don't mind, can you please do that voice? Favorite. Sorry. Well, <laughs> my favorite one of all times has got to be... Jude. Jude, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can't see it. There he is. Jude. Where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's got to be Jude because Jude represents my teenage years oh, okay you know like i it's not been the best for me you know we've all got our things growing up and stuff like that but you know there's parts of 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 my life that weren't the best and mm -hmm. um jude represents those good and bad times of being a teenager like that bouquet and i really love doing Jude because it just fro it just flows freely and wow. uh we were doing 16 mm -hmm. i would never read the script wow. I, would, I would never read it beforehand i'd read it live there because jude's lines were so like he was on a different plane altogether right there's different techniques for different for different mm -hmm. shows right and different characters mm -hmm. um uh, but I would never read Jude's. <laughs> I would never read Jude's ahead of time because you couldn't plan his stuff to get those those um, those responses, or because other people would be talking, but Jude would mm -hmm. be on a different plane. You know, he he always talked to inanimate objects. You know, he had a girlfriend that was a chair that <laughs> talked. You know what I mean? Like he did stuff like that. So to be that, if you were to plan that. It may sound rehearsed, which is what you don't want to do. Um, so I would never read it until we did it, mm -hmm. like as we do it. 
And one time that bit me in the ass uh, mm. uh, because not that I didn't get the flow of the scene or anything, but because um, Sean Cullen, who is a, uh, a very well-known and respected comedian uh, and performer, uh, a general renaissance man here in Canada and around the world, he wrote an episode and he had a line in there that when I read it for the first time, I just started, I just busted out laughing. It was something about, yeah, and now I know not to stick my hand in a, in a pony's mouth. And I just the way I said it, I cracked myself up, right? And I couldn't stop laughing. It's like trying not to laugh in church or something. You know, you're just like, oh, yeah. oh I just could, I couldn't. And when I get the giggles, Joe, mm-hmm. when I get the giggles, it's over. Like, it's over <laughs> so, for like 20 minutes. And they were like, can you just like, okay, enough. Like they were getting, at first it was laughable. But then it was not, and I couldn't stop. And the more, the more nervous I got, the more I giggled. Um, but that's uh, that's my favorite guy. Um, so here I'll be like, I'll do his voice, dude. You're harshing my mellow, <laughs> sweet. In a place where we belong. It's so weird to see my face do it and not the character. But one of the best voices that I like doing mm-hmm. was on a, on a cartoon called Almost Naked Animals, where mm-hmm. I played Dirk Danger. It was the first time mm-hmm. that I was able to do something that just didn't sound like me, because he was a little stunting, he was a little uh, badger, and he was, a, he was a stuntman, but he had a speech impediment, and he talked like this. Okay, for this first stunt, what I'm gonna do is this. So that was my favorite one to do because it was unique. Um, and then there was one, there was a, there's a thing on the internet called So So Happy. And you've got Devin Christian Mack, you've got Julie Lemieux, you've got all these like A-lister voice actors who don't say one word. We play all these little objects and we go, oh man, look at it. <laughs> like we're just making sounds like that and Mm -hmm. that's how we we talk and i was like that's cool too and if you saw the cast list these people we are like there's like a it's like everybody on there is a somebody but you'd never know it was them that's why i like it i like voice acting Mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter your age sex religion race nothing nationality it's a voice and it's free and um you know in in my line of work Mm. you know what i do i get paid Mm. i get paid i get paid to look sound and think like me like i get paid to look sound and think like me mm-hmm. i don't i didn't always look sound or think like me back you know 25 years ago when i started but the thing is when you get paid to sound like mm-hmm. you you're also getting paid to think like you and you mm-hmm. just feel great but you're not limited to this they don't know right and these they're always looking for new faces and new voices when, you know, uh, 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 if you want to join the industry and it doesn't matter when you show up. That's what I like about voice acting. It's freeing. It's wow. absolutely freeing. And um, yeah, I don't know why I went on that little tangent. Oh, good. Can you hear a band in the background? I think they're doing a mic check. They're not doing anything now. Mm-mm. Oh, it might be outside. Okay. All right. If you wouldn't mind, can you do some Chris? Chris McLean? Sure, man. All right. What's your what's your podcast called? Uh The Boys Podcast. The Boys? Podcast, yep. The Boys. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. The following shout out goes out to my main camper Joe and the Boys Podcast and is being performed by an animated host. Do not try any of what you see here. Seriously. This guy will mess you up. <laughs> McLean out. What's up?
on Samafall all over. Oh my god, that's so cool. I'm sorry. I'm was sorry. It weird to see my face while I did it though, because like it's that guy's face, but it's this guy. It's like it's funny when I teach at uh, when I teach at my the colleges and stuff. I have a bunch of twenty year olds in the class who grew up on this thing when uh-huh. they were like nine, ten, and now they're taking voice acting from oh. me. They can hear like Jude and Chris and Trevor and all this stuff, and then they 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 they're like, but they don't get it because it they they know it is that or that and and, but then they look up and they see some, you know, forty eight forty nine year old guy with a receding hairline and crippling support payments going, you can do it too, <laughs> and it's kind of uh, it's kind of like you know, it's kind of just a it's a neat it's it's a mind effect. I remember one time I was doing a convention. Uh-huh. It was like a fan expo, a Comic Con sort of thing, and uh, so what I was doing was I was ha- I was hanging up behind my standees and I was eating something, and hmm. these girls walk by my table, and on my table I use fan art instead of the stuff from the uh, I used to run contests and I'd run fan art. Uh, contest for my YouTube channel and if I used their stuff I would give these artists some money and stuff like that and wow. um, so I would I had a bunch of fan art that was all like you know 8 by 10s and like poster size stuff I had some stuff from the shows itself um, and uh, but it was like a little outdated because it's like years later so I'm using fan art and these girls are coming by going oh my god I love this show they just thought I was like an animator guy so I like I take a bite of my sandwich and I come out from mm-hmm. behind the thing. And she goes, Oh my god, I love Jude so much. You know, I swear to God, I thought my boyfriend was gonna be exactly like him. And then I come around the corner, I'm like, dude, that, that is so unharshing, my mellow. <laughs> it's kind of like Star and Jude are going on a date, except I wouldn't puke in your mouth. And she looks up at me and she's all like, What sorcery is this? And she goes, are you the voice of, of thing? And I was like, you know it. And she's like, she, she puts her arms out like this. And she's like, uh, so I, I come around the corner. I come, I come around from the table because her friend's like, what's the matter? And so I, she was like, can I give you a hug? And I was like, yeah, sure. So, I, you know, just going for a hug. She faints. Oh, my God. And I was like, what happened? You know what, though? I forget, though, because, you know, when you're when I've been involved with Make-A-Wish Foundation three times, two of those children have passed away. Oh, and their last thing that they wanted to do was to meet me because they've been years in the hospital. And, and you know, I know I, I like. I know about the, the hospitals because, you know, a lot of my fan base is in hospitals. Um, because there's nothing to do but watch cartoons, right? If you're sick and you're ill, you need to escape and have a different reality. And, you know, uh, a lot of my fan base is, you know, they're, they're outsiders, just like kind of like the way I grew up, too. I've always been just a little different and on the outside. I didn't really have a one group, and we moved around a lot that I, they, you know, that I belonged with and, and stuff. And I've just always been just sort of, a little too weird for certain groups, a little too hyper for other ones, not jock enough, and da da da. And then I hang around all the the acting kids or the actor kids and uh, the drama kids in high school and stuff like that. And I found my people. But we, back then in the 80s, you know, we were all, it was alternative and we were kind of living in small northern Ontario town. So I've always been an outsider. But I didn't realize it until, you know, I started working with Make-A-Wish Foundation or people with disabilities or autism and stuff going, I get it. I get it. And they all say the same thing. You're Mm -hmm. part of my memories. You're part of my childhood. Mm -hmm. I hear it from parents all the time. It's like, we all grew up. You you grew up with my kids. I know your sound. Because even parents, when I'm signing autographs at a thing, they want one too because they were watching this was back then when we had appointment television, you know, but you know, it, it's, it's, you become a part of people's memories and you never forget that. I remember yeah. meeting some of my childhood voice actor friend, uh, um, heroes, 
you know, working with Paul Souls, who recently just passed away, but he was the original voice of Peter Parker in the original Spider-Man cartoon. And here I am doing movies with him and voice jobs with him. And I was just like, I could hear his voice. And I'd just be like, wow. Because yeah. you hear it. You yeah. hear it. You know, and you're like, oh, and you go back to being a little child. And it's, it's quite a powerful thing because it's like a vibration, you know? Mm -hmm. And to know that for the last 25 years of my life, my sound, that oh. sound that I was gifted by the universe to do mm -hmm. is going around the world 24 hours a day in different oh. parts and just always floating around like part of the tapestry. And that changed my views on, on what I was doing. I don't charge for autographs anymore. I used to when I first started doing conventions and stuff like that. I was like, this is great. I'm making more money now off of selling my autograph from those cartoons than I made off the actual cartoons. Mm -hmm. But then when people started saying, you're part of my memories, mm -hmm. you're, you're you, you know, because of you, I wanted to become a voice actor because I heard that you were learning disabled and, and you, you went through it and you did this. I'm learning disabled too. And I wanted to, I'm following you. And I was like, whoa, whoa, okay. And then I'm looking down at the, uh, you know, the, the things that I'm signing and I'm looking at them and they're meeting here and they're just giving me money. And I was like, I don't feel right about this. You mm -hmm. know, I don't feel right about this at all because I have a talent. Mm -hmm. But if I don't show somebody who wants to be like me and just do the thing because they understand that being learning disabled or being bullied or something like that. And they found something in this. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, maybe I should buy your autograph. You know, I'll buy your autograph. And I was like, tell you what, don't give me $80 for, or a hundred dollars for my autograph. That isn't what I was going to charge, but the organizers making me charge this. Right. But why don't you do this? Why don't you buy a microphone and I'm just going to give you all the free autographs you want and I'm going to teach you how to do it. And that's when I started changing my thing. And I'm like, I'm never going to charge my autograph. I'm never going to charge for my autograph again. It just, I will donate it if they want for like a charity thing, but it just doesn't seem right because you're part of people's memories and you shouldn't make money off of people's memories. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've paid for it as an actor and you know, and that's it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of neat, man. Like even talking about this with you, you catch me like four or five years ago, it would have been a different story because mm -hmm. I ended up becoming a parody of myself. I'd just be at these conventions doing imitations of something that I did four or five years ago and not growing as a voice actor. Oh. I'd still stuck on the same things, doing the shout outs, people's birthdays, graduation, marriages divorces you know whatever you know and, and there i am doing it as the character and i felt kind of cheap and it took away the worth of the work that i did because mm -hmm. i don't own these characters but i own the sound and the soul to them and i worked really hard to do that so why would i cheapen myself by you know panhandling for more money just to do an impression to do stuff so that's why I started teaching voice acting instead of just promote promoting because I got really good at promoting promoting mm -hmm. and not doing any voice acting, you know. Well, oh, well, I have you know I think you were you were, you're like my childhood too. Like you know, like they say that you are my childhood, dude. And so, so what's it like? Let me ask you because sure. I'm always curious. Like, what's going on? Like, because how old were you when you started watching Total Drive? You're 20 now. 19. <laughs> 19 you're 19 so total drama came out 15 years ago so you were like still in diapers when this thing came out like six years old i think maybe six five old. yeah like you're young yeah you're young so here you are growing up with this thing and now 15 years later you're talking to the guy that used to just talk out of your tv What's yeah that for you let me ask you that i'm curious let's let's i'll be the interviewer the boys huh. all right joe let me ask you something sure. um, so here we are 15 years later mm -hmm. right and you grew you grew up hearing my voice and watching this guy and other ones 
Uh, and there's probably some that you didn't even know was me. But well, you can go find them now. But here you are 20 years later or 15 something years later. How's that make you feel, man? Like, tell me about some of your experiences. It and feels, what it feels like right now. I'm very curious. I, I feel crazy. Like, I feel like I'm having like a weird dream. Not a weird dream, but like crazy dream. Like, I can't, I can't believe it's like happening, you know? I mean, my hero. And, it is. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is like, see, this is a shared experience. You know what I mean? That's why I like your podcast. It's really nice. So you. would you ever do imitations? Of like certain characters on Total Drama? Or yeah. I would try, but not good though. Who who would you try? Chris. <laughs> Chris. Hey? Yeah. He's my favorite character, so I had to use Chris. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's give you a little Chris one on one. You want to learn how to do Chris? Sure. Okay. okay. So, you know, here's the thing about Chris, though. Okay. You find this really interesting. I've never told anybody this. So, I just okay. so when we um, were doing Total Drama, the first couple of episodes, it was uh -huh. a lot of work for me because I'd have to, at first, I introduced like the 20 some odd characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'd introduce them, and then I would introduce the challenge, yeah. and then I'd be doing comments on the challenge throughout it, and then I'd be saying the odd thing to um, the odd thing to the odd contestant or camper or intern, um, yeah. and then some some things were to the camera, and then I'd do a big intro. I'd be like, "Last time on Total Drama," da, 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 and then. Then at the end, I have a nice little thing on Total Drama Island. And so the thing is, we're about a couple episodes in. It's a huge cast. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows. We're not gelling because they bring them in one at a time. Wow. Because if you get a bunch of actors in there at the same time, it just doesn't work sometimes. Unless it's not for this show. There's just so many. So bring us in one at a time. And I was always last. Mm. Right? Some wow. people would show up for like... 10, 15 minutes. Some people would be there for an hour. Some people there for two hours. I was there for a minimum of two hours because I'd be doing the whole show. And sometimes we do X, two shows, two scripts, or we would do pickups and stuff like that. So I'm there. It's a slog. But the thing is, about three or four or five episodes in, mm -hmm. the voice director, Deb Toffin at the time, um, was like, I'm not feeling it. And the notes are like, it's coming out flat. And I was like, how, how am I supposed to do this? It's just a laundry list. And how am I supposed to make it sound like it's, it's like engaged? Like I'm trying, like I'm trying. And it was this challenge and a struggle at night. And then Deb Toffin said something that changed Chris McLean completely. Mm. She goes, can you just smile? when you say it mm -hmm. all right so i went from this last time on total drama to this last time on total drama and it changed but the thing is now i'm yelling mm -hmm. i'm yelling to get that sound out because you can't even go last time on total drama mm -hmm. hey camper you know you got to be like hey camper and then they turn down the gain so it just sounds like I'm talking and not yelling. But for two or three hours, I am yelling at high octane. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like you're bringing it down, you're compressing it, but you're pushing forward. It's like, like a stage whisper, like going, I am yelling, but you're not going, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of like, keep it quiet, but you're pushing it. So uh -huh. I want you to do this, go. So just go, last time on Total Drama. Okay. If this, is, if this is bad, I'm sorry. I'm not, no, like, no such thing is bad. Okay. <clears throat> Last time I told you, I can't do a good. Sorry. No, 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 no. Just, just go, like, just go for it. Just brighten up your eyes and go. Last time on Total Drama. Okay. <laughs> big smile, big smile. <laughs> okay. Yes. You got okay. Smile. Here we go. Last time on Total Drama. Sorry. <laughs> you'll be my, you'll be Chris's cousin from Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love it. The accent came right out. So, you know what we'll do? 
Because, see, I put certain emphasis. I have a certain pattern with Chris. Like all mm -hmm. my characters, I create a pattern of speaking okay. so that it can just flow. And I just, you know, because when you have the character, the voice just comes. That voice may ask for an accessory to be lent to it, which is an accent, a dialect, speech impediments, flirty qualities, nasally qualities, growly qualities. But those are accessories. Everyone right. thinks that that's the voice. No, you have the character. That mm -hmm. voice just comes without even yeah. thinking about it. You get out of your way and let the character speak because people will read stuff, but characters don't read. Nobody reads like they talk. Nobody talks like they write. But we as voice actors do all three seamlessly. Wow. I can't tell. There are some times where I play stuff for clients or students here, and I play them a... a a, a, a pass and they're like I just love how you can just free flow like you can just talk like that and I was like excuse me I'll hand them the script and then I'll press play again and they're looking at it and going it's word for word but how do you do that how? you know and I was like well because we as voice actors mm -hmm. we know that there's three things happening Every time you step up to, in front of, or behind the microphone, mm. there's who you are, mm -hmm. who are you, who are you talking to, and where are you? Just like it says in the scripts, interior or exterior gives the place, and it says day or night. If you have that concept, because it's theater of the mind, if you can, like, because when you're in a recording booth, you're not in a five by seven recording booth or a sound stage or a, you've got a shotgun mic or a Neumann and the headphones and the dead. No, no, that's a holodeck. That's Narnia. That's that's Middle Earth. That's a classroom. That's a bedroom. That's a battlefield. That's a blah, 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 blah. wherever you are. But who are you? Who mm -hmm. are you talking to? And where are you? Wow. You know, that changes everything. So those are the things we know. Besides the other three things that we know as voice actors, every time you step up to, in front of, or behind the microphone, there's also three things happening. Mm -hmm. There's what you think you sound like to you, mm -hmm. which is a masturbatory dance of pageantry fueled by ego. Mm -hmm. Then there's what you think you sound like to others, which is all of those things, plus manipulation and performance for a desired outcome fueled mm -hmm. by fears and insecurities. And mm -hmm. then... There's the truth and nobody likes the truth. Everyone's like, I hate my voice. Or like what you just said, I can't do it. I was like, no, you probably could. You just don't, you just don't, you won't let it out. You won't let it, you won't let it, you won't try because you're afraid of the fears and insecurities of like doing it in front of the guy who actually does Chris McClain, right? Going, no, no, you actually did it. You could do it, but it's intimidating, yeah. right? It's intimidating, but don't worry, man. Listen, I want to I want to work with you, man. All right, let's get you a microphone, and let's okay. get you. I want to give you some voice lessons. You know, some voice acting lessons. I want to demo, dude. Let's do it. Because I don't know if I told. Actually, could uh, do you know? Okay, you're probably familiar. Do you know Stitch from Leo and Stitch? Yeah, oh, Stitch. <laughs> I could kind of do a Stitch voice. If you want to hear that? Yeah, dude, hit it, hit it. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> It's me, Stitch, mad on his family. I'm sorry, that was a bad answer. <laughs> no, don't apologize. See, never apologize. We never apologize. What are you, why are you sounding Canadian, bro? You're American. You're supposed to be like, this is the best. <laughs> <laughs> and then, never apologize for, for trying something. you got to hmm. be fearless, Joe. Okay. you got to be a tourist to your own talent. Get out of your way and let it out. Be free. Because it's in the accidents or it's in the finger painting. It's with the, I'm just trying to do it. Mm. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to find something new because I'll let you know something. Mm -hmm. I also, as a voice actor, will be like, they'll be like, oh, man, can he do anything other besides Chris and Jude and da-da-da? And I was like, I can, mm. but you're not asking, you're not bringing me in for it. Mm. Because, you know, once they know you as this... They, they're always going to hear other characters because it's not like they're on small shows. Total drama is huge. So it gets seen a lot, right? So that gets gr drilled. And just because Chris sounds like me naturally doesn't mean I can't do other voices, right? Yeah. Um, 
uh, I had a point. What were we talking about? What were we talking about just before that? Teaching me classes. Gave me a mic. Yeah, you can make a demo. Then I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, just in this little in this little thing. Here. Oh, this is it. Yes. Um, so um, to do that, to change casting's mind, mm -hmm. I would use other people's voices that also are very distinct. Mm -hmm. okay. And... Um, and, and and would change the shape of my my voice would change mm -hmm. the shape of my sound when I would do other people to help it like cross pollinate with uh, stuff so that when I went to do a character mm -hmm. it would it would sound different and so I, I would pick somebody like Christopher Walken who has a very distinct way of speaking too right yeah. it's very distinct. as soon as you hear it you go that's Christopher Walken. Right, mm -hmm. just the same way they go like, that's Chris McLean, that's Christian Patanza, right? It's the same thing, but I'm not comparing myself to Christopher Walken. I'm just saying that, you know, he has a distinct way of speaking as well as I do for, for my characters. But Christopher Walken's character, he does that thing where he does his Christopher Walken thing. It's very unique to him. So yeah. I do an imitation of Christopher Walken, which sucks because my imitation of Christopher Walken is actually an imitation of somebody doing an imitation of Christopher Walken. It's terrible. So watch what I do to, to, to blend and smear it. Okay. So I'm doing my Christopher Walken, which is terrible. As you can see, this is a terrible Christopher Walken, probably the worst. And some of my friends who do Christopher Walken want to punch me in the face because this is terrible. But what I do is I put a little John C. Riley in with this character, maybe put a British accent as well, or a Southern one, and I keep moving it and smearing it. Mm. And I also use people I don't like. You know those people you just like, I hate this person's voice. I just hate it. There's, mm. a, there's a guy on the radio here called Pat Finelli for Pizza Pizza. He mm. actually works at this pizza, you know, he works for the company, and he's also their spokesman. And he's mm. like, hey, I'm Pat Finelli from Pizza Pizza. And he's just like, he's always on the radio. And as a guy that's always on the radio, I wanted to be on the radio or just have my voice out there. This guy's always on. And he's just talking like him, but he's he represents Pizza Pizza. So he's like, hey, it's Pat Finelli from Pizza Pizza. Blah, blah, blah. And he sounds like my, my Italian relatives. You know <laughs> what I mean? They got that sound. Up here we have this place called Woodbridge. And it's just like, he sounds so Woodbridge. I just like, Ugh. And, um... And it's not polished, it's not anything, but he's supposed to sound like that. But every yeah. time I hear him, I'm like, Pat Finelli's on the radio again. I want to be on Pat. So what I've done is I've taken that character of this person that just, just their voice kind of grates at me. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I turn it into a character because now Pat Finelli is my office jerk. Hey, you guys want to go to wing night? Hey, it's me. You know what I mean? I just use that guy's voice. I'm not doing it very well because... I don't really, I don't dislike Pat Finelli. It's just that he's always on the radio. And I'm like, but it's just constant. It's like, whether I want to or not, I'm always hearing him. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. but it's ingrained. But that's the thing, man. You got to create a library of sound. So right now, what I would do is I was, if I was you was like, use, use Chris like on your own. And mm -hmm. try to emulate that, but then make it your own. That's all we do, too. I've had oh. friends like uh, my buddy Scott McCord. And uh, Scott McCord, he plays Owen, and he plays everything else. He played my dad in Sidekick. Um, and Scott McCord is, like, the best voice actor I've ever met. And this guy's great. Him and Corey Doran, they're, like, they're so good. It's an honor to work with these guys. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does he also play Trent too? I think if I remember correctly. I think Trent? so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 See. Yeah. These guys play everything, and um, so I've run into them at auditions, and they're like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an imitation of you." Especially if it says it's a stoner dude, they're like, "I'm just gonna do an imitation of you." And I was like, "I'm just gonna do you because you book everything." <laughs> oh man, that's all you do is we do imitations of each other or or actors and. Um, and then uh, we're doing um, imitations of each other, but we're making it we're making it our own. 
we sort of like finger paint with it a bit, like a kid in a sandbox, create and destroy, create and destroy, create and destroy. Yeah. Yeah, just be free. Grab a mic and be free. Don't inhibit yourself. Don't go, oh, that's terrible if it doesn't sound the way it's supposed to because it's like happy accidents. Bob Ross was right. Happy accidents. Fail forward. Stumble forward. Be a tourist to your talent. Explore. Don't try to nail it. That's not how we do it in the booth. We don't try to nail it. Mm -hmm. It's still an exploration. Always. Because we're born flawed. As mm -hmm. humans, we're born flawed. So celebrate that because you're not a human having a spiritual experience. You're a spirit having a human experience. Yeah, I like that. Stop. Yeah, dude. All day, you and me, we spit knowledge. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, favorite total drama character other than you know, Chris McLean, of course. Favorite character? Owen. Owen, okay. Owen, Scott McCord. Because it's so good. I know him. I'm in the booth with him. Mm. I see him put in his work. And I know he doesn't sound like that. But when I hear Owen, mm. I'm like, how does he do that? <laughs> how does he do that? It's an inspiration, <laughs> right? So I'm like, that's why I love it. I could watch Owen all the time. And, and I guess for me, it's because I could see the circuitry and... Mm. and artistry of scott mccord doing owen you know and i'm just like Pfft. for many reasons a one of the funniest lines he's got the funniest lines and b i know the guy who does it and i'm always blown away so there's like a double enjoy because when i watch cartoons mm -hmm. i have a different perspective right mm -hmm. i have a very different perspective and i find it hard to um I find it hard to just sit back and enjoy animation, you mm. know, as an audience member, because yeah. I know what it takes and I'm all like, hmm, I can't help but pick it apart. It's mm. only a few times where I'm all like, this is funny, where I'm just like, yep, <laughs> this, I'm entertained. Um, but yeah, yeah, Owen and Mr. Coconut. <laughs> yeah, the legend, Mr. Coconut. The legend. Legendary Mr. Coconut. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, because mine would be probably like, do you remember Brick? I um, probably remember Brick. Do you remember? Yeah, Brick. Was that in Pakateo Island, or was that in Redonkulous? That was like in Revenge of the Island. Revenge of the Island. Revenge of the Island, right? You gotta, you gotta remind me, man. Ooh, yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah, I, I like told drama, so I, like I can't remember all the characters, so. I could tell you something, man. You're really gonna love these two new seasons. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to love them, man. We, we've done one episode so far, but we're doing two whole seasons right through. Right through. I, I want to see it so bad when it comes out. Like, when it comes out, I'll be like, oh my God, you know. I'm, yeah. It'll probably come out next summer. Okay. Looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be out next summer. I don't know, like, whether it's the fall or whatever, but... I know it's going to go right on Cartoon Network. So it's not like it would be on a, a network before where it would be on once a week mm -hmm. because it's going to go uh, – Cartoon Network will probably do once a week. Uh, HBO Max, it's going to be on there as well. Uh, oh. But, like, if they put it up on Netflix, it'll just be like, there you go. Yeah. There wow. you go. Okay. Now, uh, favorite total drama season, would you say, of all world, the different – World tour. My favorite for total drama season because Gosh. we um we as a cast like it was such a gift it wasn't acting there was musical numbers and like i i didn't get to do any of the musical numbers but i remember watching them and just like it's mm. like it just it was a good vibe and some of the songs were really friggin' good you know they Gosh. were they were catchy and they were nice. I was like, these should be up on iTunes. And I was like, I was just proud to be a part of something that was like, that's neat. Yeah. Like, that's neat. I don't know too many um, cartoons at the time mm -hmm. that were doing full on musical numbers. Yeah. You know, right. unless you're on a Disney show, but that's different. Yeah. This was like, this was a, a, a 22 minute show mm -hmm. 
that was on once a week and we're doing musical numbers, like that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're just coming in and reading a few lines and doing some stuff and some actions, some barks and onos, you know? It's like, it was full on. And like, to be part of that is like, I felt like one of the cool kids, you know? Yeah. And it had so much hype. Yeah, so that's what uh, that's what was my favorite season. That's funny because that's actually my favorite season too. So, right? Do you sing, Joe? Not good. No, not good. Not, not well. Good. Not, well. not well. Not well. Change that because listen, in animation, it doesn't have to sound good. Because mm. what if you're playing the toad? Do re mi fa so la ti do. Yeah. Does it sound good? No. Does it sound perfect for the toad? Yep. So remember, get the character first. The voice just comes. Yeah, like that. Okay. Now, uh, what would you say? Like when recording, did you like like the beginning of the recording? Did you guys know who the winner was going to be? Like at the end of the season? Did no. You know? No. No idea. And every time an actor gets a script, they uh. go right to the back to see if they're voted out, like before they read it. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny, but no, we didn't, we never knew mm -hmm. who was the winner because mm -hmm. there was multiple winners oh. because there's different countries or properties, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they wanted somebody else to win, right? Mm -hmm. So they would have different outcomes and we would never know which one it would be. Yeah. Plus, we signed a non-disclosure agreement, which means we couldn't tell anybody, but we would never know. And then there'd be like two or three different um, winners at the end, and we would never know until it aired. But then somebody in South America, somebody in South America, uh, like uh, sorry, uh, 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 there'd be a different winner maybe for South America, a different one for Australia, and and you know, depending on fan favorites. So. Um, oh. yeah, the, the, the one thing I like, uh, actually, no, I don't know if I can say that. Never mind. I was going to say something about this season that we're doing, but I don't know what's, what's, uh, press released and, and what's yes. not, but I will, I will act on the side of caution and say nothing. 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 I don't know nothing. What, did you, uh, what was he saying? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, uh, back when social media started, like, you know, Total Drama just started in 2007. So did yeah. this little thing called Facebook. So did something called YouTube, like where it just all of a sudden showed up and people were like, hey, are you the voice of Chris McClain? I was like, yeah, why? And they're like, can I get a blah, 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 blah? And I was like, what? And then some kid in Pennsylvania took my, took pictures off the inter off of Facebook from me or the mm -hmm. internet started a YouTube channel and said, Hey, I'm Christian Potenza. And if you want to know what's going on with the show, and if you want to know, um, uh, you know, uh, if you want contest and if you want to know what's going on with the show, all this stuff, subscribe to my channel and blah, blah, blah. And, and then, so I get called into the offices and they're like, what are you doing, man? And I was like, that's not me. Obviously look at this. Like, yeah. look, is it looks like it's done by a 12 year old and it was we found out so i contacted the kid and i said hey love that you like the you know the enthusiasm here but can i get my name back because i'm trying to start my own channel and uh and i'm getting a lot of heat from the uh the people that run the show uh -huh. and um and the legal department oh you know? and they're like uh, and then he says, no, no, I'm not giving it back. And oh, if you give it back, I want a passport to Canada and I want a part on the show. And I was like, are you trying to blackmail me, kid? Are hey. you trying to blackmail me? And I was like, oh. fine. So then I opened up with something called the real Christian Potenza. <laughs> the real Christian Potenza channel. And then I uh. took my camera into work and uh. I just, hey, everyone, check this out. Uh, I'm Christian Potenza. I'm the voice of blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of people putting up fake accounts on this new thing called social media and YouTube saying that they're me trying to get subscribers. But unless it has me in it, because mm -hmm. I was trying to clear my name, right? 
So then yeah. I brought it into the booth. Then I brought it into the, um, I brought it into the booth. I brought it into like, I do interview actors that were going in to um, do some stuff and, uh, you know, do a session and I'd interview them there. And then I started posting it and it just took off and I became a partner with YouTube. And next thing I know, I'm making money off of YouTube. That's when I got sucked into the uh, uh, social, social media and conventions and all that stuff because I could access fans. And so the shows would have a life outside of just being the show. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, that's that's kind of yeah, that's kind of how that all started for me. But man, what a weird time. What a weird, weird time. That, what, a, what were you saying? Sorry. Nothing. I, I just think that like for the I, I'm not saying I wouldn't have been as successful, but my career drastically changed because of social media because of things like YouTube where I could engage the fans. I wasn't just an actor that's in the, uh, in the, in a, you know, in a booth somewhere making sounds and it changed a lot. I remember getting parts on other cartoons just because I would do a review or mm-hmm. I, sorry, I would do something. I ta- I'd bring the camera in and, and do a review and talk to the other actors and talk about a show and they would just let me do it. But then a few times I got my face slapped because, you know, my hand slapped because there's like, there's rules and stuff that I didn't know about. And I thought I said, I thought I could. And they're like, yeah, you can't because that's Barbie. That's Mattel. You can't be showing that shit. I was like, sorry. I was just, yeah. you know, I didn't know what rotations were. So, you know, I was trying to explain to everybody how cartoons were made. So there was a lot of like figuring it out. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, social media has changed. But I'm able to talk to you. You have you have your own podcast. Yeah. You're talking to a bunch of voice actors. And that's because you have access to us and we have access to you now. So technology, my friend. Yeah. I was going to say that kid, though, like, what a little punk, you know? My opinion. Little... Sorry. Yeah. And then he was threatening me, too. Like, it was like, it's weird. Because, like, you get fans. Uh-huh. And then people that are just jerks. Just plain old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just playing out that, and they're just mean for no reason. And I've been bullied my whole life. You know what I mean? So when I when I come across these people, I'm like, all right, all right, I'm not mm-hmm. gonna respond, even though I'm hurt. Here mm-hmm. I am, a grown man, a father, but some twelve year old kid is like calling me names, and it hurts me. You know, I decided I'm not even gonna engage because mm-hmm. it's just like that. Because we do have access. But what I did do was because I had this group called the Animation Nation Army, uh, which is like all my fans put it together. Um, what we did was we, I have a few people, I call them high ranking officers in the Animation Nation Army. And I sort of put it out to them. I go, listen to what these, this kid's doing. And I put up his screenshots of his stuff. And I go, mm-hmm. his name. Can you guys help me, like, tell him to stop threatening me and stop, like, you know, saying he's going to burn down my house, look outside, kept calling me a hobo. Yeah, it would just, dude, Sorry. I still remember the kid's name. And that was, like, he's got to be in his mid-20s now. But I told my fans, like, this guy's bothering me. Guys, I can't do anything about it, but I'm getting trolled. I'm getting bullied. And so they went after him. And then the kid just disappeared. And, like... That's how it's done. Yeah. Oh. You know, because social media, nobody came up with rules. Yeah. Nobody came up with rules. Everyone just started doing it. And like, I'm not on social media anymore. You know, it's just like, it's as a 50 year old man, it's just like, and, and now with what's going on in the world, there's just a lot of this. This is nice because we're having a conversation. But yeah. when you can post and just like, it just, you're leaving yourself open. And there's just a lot more negative than there is positive. Yep. You yeah, you know what I mean? I am. But I like what you're doing here, man. This is nice because we get to talk about these sort of things. Yeah. See? So we're friends, Christian. Joe and yeah. Christian. Two boys. <laughs> yeah, dude. We're friends, man. We're buds. We're pals. Let's right. go. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, if you want me asking, because I keep always seeing this too. What is, you know, like, Chris, what is he wearing exactly? What's in the 
bag or you know talk about off oh, that side it's a weird question <laughs> people no. always ask me that and um yeah sorry and, uh, here i got a solution for you so you you were asking me what's in what's in his pouch right and yeah. I, uh I have a little pouch that I carry and it has an amethyst heart in it and a tiger's eye little um, little stones and some feathers that I found and a dime that I found. And that's what I always pictured was in there. It was like this little amethyst heart. I see. Wow. Yeah. So I don't really know what's in there. I don't really know what Jude's symbol is. People ask me that all the time. I was like, I don't know. But that's so now that I, I I actually carry those that little amethyst heart and these little uh, tiger's eye things that were given to me by uh, some friends and I keep it with me and well, that's what I say it's in there it's an amethyst crystal heart I like that okay. yeah it is nice wow. it is. but what do you think's in there Joe let me ask you I would say like love because Chris is a cool character my right opinion. Bingo, bingo. Love they it. should, they should show that in the show, like, cause like, say, like, oh, like, this is what he has, or I don't know. No, that's just a suggestion. Oh no. <laughs> you okay, Christian? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I was just looking at. It. I was like, is it a stone? Is it a stone or is it a pouch? You know what I mean? I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's going to be one of those total drama mysteries that no one will ever know. Yeah. Unless we ask the anime, the, the person who designed it. Maybe I'll ask Todd Kaufman. He drew it. He created it. So let's ask him. Okay. Yeah, if he ever, if he finds out an answer, let me know. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Cool. If you were really, on, this my, my mom came up with this question, so she really was curious if you were really on an island nate what three famous people dead or alive would you want on the island with you i would like kurt cobain okay peter sellers okay and my mom i, don't know. I like that I, I would like those three people. If I could only bring three people, that's who I would bring. Peter Sellers, Kurt Cobain, and my mom. I like that. I, I always like to eat family first, so I like the answer. Yeah. Yeah, now, see, the only reason I hesitated on my mom, because I don't know if my mom, my mom's, my mom's, like, up in heaven now. So I don't know if she wanted to actually come down to the, the island to hang out with Kurt Cobain, Peter Sellers, and myself, which she's got a good thing going on right now. That's why I hesitated. But if I could have my way, that's who I would bring. I like that, Christian. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you could pick any role in any movie or TV show, is there a role you want to do that you haven't done yet, but you want to do it? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good. You know what, though? The, uh, there, there has been stuff. I'd see stuff and go, oh, I'd love to be that. You know, I'd love to be that. But I, I remember uh, Adam Sandler did a movie called Punch Drunk Love. You ever seen it? I, I'm a, I like Adam Sandler movies, so I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, so Punch Drunk Love, when it came out, was like, that kind of blew me away. I was like, this is a really good film. I liked it. It was dark it was like it was it was off a bit like it was it was that kind of thing that scratches my cerebralness <laughs> and i remember thinking like i wish that would have been my part mm -hmm. you know it was like this quirky movie and i i just loved it and i was very impressed with adam sandler who was like i'm not the biggest fan because it's like I don't, i'm not really his movies aren't my thing right but when I saw Punch Drunk Love, I was like, damn, okay, <laughs> that's good. That's kind of my alley. That's up my alley. So I, uh, I would say Punch Drunk Love still to this day. In fact, I'm going to watch that this weekend. I'm going to watch it this weekend. 
Oh, so if I had a DeLorean, you know, time machine and Back to the Future, I'm going to put you in that movie, okay? I'll put you. <laughs> yeah, dude. That'd be amazing. Huh. Because Philip Seymour Hoffman's in it, too, and I love him. He's amazing. Okay. He's... Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Why, okay. you so... Why do you sound so Canadian about this? With all the apologies. Why, dude? We're two awesome guys. Don't yeah. apologize for being awesome, dude. Thank you. Okay. Now, if, do you, over the years of your career, do you still keep in touch with other co-stars and directors? Um, yes and no. Everyone's pretty transient, and I'll see them, you know, at a recording. But, you know, we don't see each other anymore because we don't go into the studios. Um, keeping in touch, I don't know. Like, sometimes if we're working on a project together but you know the the older the the more i approach 50 the more and more that everyone just sort of hangs back and does their own thing and you know you've got i've got a 17 year old daughter trying to enjoy that too you know what i mean not so much the industry but like my daughter um you know in life and um and so it's not it's it's all changed the industry's changed so staying in touch is a different thing now but maybe before covid yeah there'd always be people I'd be like hey what's going on what are you doing you know what i mean but not so much anymore not so wow. much okay now uh who would you say is the coolest person you've worked with sam shepherd hmm. that sounds i mean funny. i got punched out by i worked with jackie chan I've worked with some big, big people. If you watch the tuxedo, I actually punch out Jackie Chan. You know, I got, I've worked with some pretty big, like big names and uh, Jay Moore, um, Anthony Anderson, uh, Chevy Chase played my dad in a Christmas movie and Shelby the dog who saved Christmas. Uh, Burt Reynolds played my father and Leanne Rimes played my sister in a movie called Real Love. And, uh, you know, I've worked with some big, Big names, but my favorite, mm -hmm. coolest person I ever worked with was Sam Shepard. He was a playwright, and I studied his stuff in theater school, and I love Sam Shepard's plays. I love them. And when I got to work with him, and it was a movie, it was Anne Heche, Eric Stoltz, and, um, and Sam Shepard was in it. And um, I got to work with them for a month, and I, I just remember giving Sam Shepard a cigarette or two and uh, and just hang out with him. And I actually, I geeked out. I was like, could you sign my theater school textbook? You know, because it was one of his plays. It was the plays of Sam Shepard. I was like, could you oh. sign it? And he was so cool about it. And that, that was probably one of the most like, all right. But yeah, I work with a lot of cool people. But Sam Shepard, number one. Okay, now... If you didn't go into voice acting, what do you think your career, uh, voice acting and acting in general, what do you think your career would have been? And what other hobbies do you have? Well, I, um, I, I originally didn't know I'd be an actor. I knew I'd be doing something in the arts, but I wanted to be a photographer or a chef. I wanted to be a photographer that worked for National Geographic. Okay. I wanted to travel the world and take pictures. Um, I wanted to be a chef at one point. Uh, I, and a photographer and um, and then I wanted to be I wanted to go into advertising I wanted to make uh, music videos and commercials like short formats thing you know and um, I even I, I was, thought I was going to do that after high school but then I went to this open house at this college and, and looked at the uh, program and they said uh, and I was like I want to be uh, I want to get into advertising They're like that's great well, let's take a look at your portfolio. And I was like, what's a portfolio? Oh, told me what it was. And I was like, that sounds like a lot of work. So I'm going to go up to theater school. See ya. And then uh, I applied for theater school and I got in. And so, and then the rest has been that. But I've done so much. That's the thing about being an actor. You get to do all your hobbies. All mm -hmm. the roads you've taken get you to where you need to go. Wow. You know? yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, that's that answer. Wow. <laughs> favorite <clears throat> band or artist and type of music and favorite sports and teams. That's one big. Favorite band and artist. Um, oh, 
Wow, there's so many. But I, I would say that my favorite band of all time, Pound for Pound, is a band called Marcy Playground. Uh, they do that song Sex and Candy, but that's not like even close to the stuff that like I really like. I just think they're the coolest band. They've got a really great sound and they're a huge influence on me and uh, the stuff that I do here at the studio. And as far as an artist goes, well, oh, I just leave it at Kurt Cobain because I'm still stuck in the 90s. But it's, you know what, there's just a whole bouquet. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's very eclectic and it's always changing. But that's the best way I can answer that right now. You know, okay. it's not original and that's, that, you know, I'm not even trying to come up with anybody that's like, oh, do you know who I like? You've probably never heard of them. I was like, no, those are my faves. I like that. Okay. And I, best friggin' music possible. I like that. So if you had, so if you want me to bring, if I ever had any 90s musicians, let you know. <laughs> I guess. Yes. Yes, if you could get Marcy's Playground on there, I would love that. I'll invite you. I got you. I'll invite you. There you go. On. Awesome. I got you. Okay, and then favorite sports? Do you like sports? Because I know you're Canadian, so do you like hockey at least? <laughs> I used to be really into hockey. Like, I used to be really into it. Okay. Back, oh, I used to be really into it, um, and, and I did enjoy hockey. But then I remember um, – it was in the early 2000s. They, the NHL went on strike. And then I was like, you know what? I see, I see what the sport is according to this. And I, and I stopped, you know, believing the hype. And then what I did was I, uh, I, I only followed the Canadian uh, Team Canada in, in the Olympics or the Spangler Cup. And I did like hockey. But for me, I like tennis. I like to play tennis. And I like tennis. I like sports. Um, I like single sports. I'm not really like a team team guy, although I do enjoy going to like football games and I, I love rugby. Uh, I like watching lacrosse. You know, yeah. like lacrosse is hot. Dude. Um, and I like I like watching sports. It's kind of nice. Um, but to play sports, I like those sports like golf or tennis where you're like one person or you can play in doubles but you play together but it's all about self and betterment you know what i mean and as far as hobbies go you asked before uh photography and making music um cooking those same things i wanted to be when i grew up i still do because they make me a better actor that's how i document my life people go do you journal i'm like yep look at all these videos i make of my life and I'm constantly reading, but I'm not reading a novel, but, you know, I'm reading every day and it's all imagination. So all those things make me a better actor. And they also get my ADD plugged in to other things so I don't just go. Ugh! I think you would really get along with my brother because he loves writing song lyrics. I think you would really get along with them. Let's collaborate, man. Let's collaborate. We can do that now. I'll hook up your studio to my studio. Huh. Make it apps. That'd be cool because my, my brother loves writing lyrics because he loves like 90s music as well. So he'd probably go. He has, yeah. yeah. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Okay. Now, okay. What is your favorite food? <laughs> Sorry. No, that's a good question. Pasta. Well, I'm gonna say, you know what? Italian. Italian food is my favorite food, like all day long. It's in my, it's in my blood. You know, it's like I just, I crave it. So I would just say Italian food because that's how I grew up, and um, mm -hmm. I'm always finding out new things about it. Even though every time I go to the restaurant, I always get the same thing. No matter what Italian restaurant, I'll get the same thing just to try what their chicken parmesan is like. You know, I got to try it. Uh, we have this Italian restaurant up here, and we have a chain of it in Canada. I don't, you guys probably have it, too. It's called Scatabouche. Have you ever heard of it? Man, they make fresh mozzarella right there. And they just, like, you know, it's like, man, like, whoo, Italian food for the win. Italian food, Paisan. Yeah. Beach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is your advice? 
for younger kids that want to go to acting, voice acting. Christian. Let's hear advice. Be clear. My advice to you if you're starting out is to be clear. Okay. Because when you are clear, you are kind. Take risks. Mm -hmm. Be tourist to your talent. Don't be precious with it. Give it away. But don't okay. give it away as in like, oh, I'll do this and do it for free and stuff like that. But be free with the thought. Because if you think that this idea, this character or whatever that you're having is an original idea, you're sadly mistaken. It's about collaboration. Mm -hmm. And it's about listening. 89% of voice acting is listening. That only leaves you 11% for talking. People mm -hmm. have the other way around. They think they gotta talk, 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 talk. Reacting. Most of that word is acting. And they stuck a little re in front of it. Mm -hmm. So, don't overreact, but yeah. be kind to yourself. Don't be like, oh, I hate this. Oh, I hate my voice. Oh, I'm fat. Oh, I'm just, uh, 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 I have an accent. Uh, I can never. And just like, no, no, be kind. Be kind to your other actors. Because mm -hmm. when you're kind, you're clear. And when you're clear, you are kind. So those two go in hand in hand. Um, read, read children's books, read recipes, read instruction manuals, mm. read them. Try them as your hero, villain, sidekick, mentor. Go fast paced, high energy, friendly. Go slow paced, low energy, serious. Go laid back, easy going, casual. Go um, formal, announcer, host. Try the different sounds that are in the breakdowns. Mm -hmm. Start thinking of your, your demo, which is a demo, is a demonstration of your abilities. What do you want on there? You don't want to just hand in a report and go, there, I've got a demo. You're just another pebble on the beach. What makes you unique? Right? I didn't know that I would be well known as these voices. No idea. But I did something that made me stand out from the rest because I was being me not an imitation of somebody else. I was being authentic. I was being clear. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the kindest, <laughs> but I was clear, you know? And don't take it too seriously. Keep it as a hobby. A hobby is something that you always get better at. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So don't make it a career right out of the gates. It'll become a career or a vocation, or you may make money at it. But if you keep it as a hobby, you will make more money and have more success because you're just trying to get better at it because you just love doing it. Mm -hmm. huh. well, I take it like stay humble. Remember where you came from too? Gratitude. Humility. Yeah. Humility is the vulnerability is the base ingredient for acting stay mm. vulnerable stay vulnerable yeah like, there's my advice I like that we did it okay <clears throat> so question is there anything you would like to promote and shout out that help link down below in the video description help you out with yeah. If you guys, if anybody's interested in talking to me and my business partner, Stephanie, and some of the wonderful teachers uh, that we have here, and you're interested in getting involved in voice acting, check out theinfinityforge.com. Go to the website, go to the Facebook page, check out um, Instagram. I don't really run it, but... If you want to see what we've got going on, we're going to have some uh, stuff coming up in the winter um, and getting ready for pilot season. But we do one on ones. We can do Zoom classes. We can put people together and we can produce your demos so that you could get representation or start a podcast and do it legit. Learn some equipment, uh, how to use it, learn the format. Right. Because mm -hmm. right now in this day and age, he, she or they that have the technology and then 
can run a certain format through that technology and then mm -hmm. are able to take that format and technology and skin it with their talent will get the job, oh. right? Because you've got to make that demo. If you have that demo, that may be a direct booking or that demo may get you a self tape. That self tape will get you a direct booking or a virtual or in-person uh, callback as well, right? So mm -hmm. to do all that, because if you're joining the voice world, you're joining a well-established community that has its own rules, regulations, and everything. So um, do you need this? Okay. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, check us out, theinfinityforge.com. Book an appointment, a consultation. Tell them the boys sent you. Tell them Joey sent you, right? Friends and family, inner circle. And then, um, and then uh, if you want to check out our stuff on Instagram and um, uh, on uh, Facebook as well, get in touch with us. And uh, let's get you rocking the mic. Do it. Yeah. Also, I could also link down your guys' YouTube channel. Infinity Forge. Oh yeah, we're, we're yeah the Infinity Forge. Yeah, we're we're in the process of revamping stuff. So by summer, we're gonna have some of our courses on there, and we're gonna have some of our content. Uh, but you know, I'm just keeping it just sort of just sort of yeah. chill right now because sometimes things happen, sometimes they don't. So I don't want to promote something that may or may not happen. But there's a lot of stuff going on right now that we're not airing because we're still working it out. But it all has to do with you know, people doing their demos and some radio plays with us and, uh, you know, their own podcast. So wow. that's trying to figure out. Okay. Well, I thank you all so much for watching. Thank you and Christian for being an awesome and amazing guest. This was a fun time. Thank you. Joey, this was really a treat, man. This is really special. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And you stay awesome, Christian. McLean out. <laughs>